In today's programme, our team of real governors will be tackling a hypothetical yet realistic situation as it develops in a school. Today's challenging dilemma involves the potential complications of recruiting a new head teacher. First, let's meet the panel. Jane Abramson, a community governor with 16 years' experience. Alex McNair, a parent governor for the last five years. And Eileen Moxon, with 15 years' governing expertise, including five as chair. Keeping a close eye on the proceedings and assessing the governor's performance is Paul McGann, an education officer with over 15 years of experience supporting and training governors and troubleshooting problems in schools. It's time for the panel to find out what today's challenge is. The head teacher at our hypothetical school is retiring after 20 years in the role and believes his deputy would be ideally suited to replace him. The deputy has the support of many staff and governors. The chair of governors, however, is not confident that he's experienced enough for the role and he feels the school needs a change of vision. The school also has many new governors and the chair is unsure that they've got the necessary experience to handle the recruitment process. I would feel very strongly that an outgoing head teacher should not be indicating his or her wishes about a successor. That's very much the interview panel job. And I think under equal opportunity principles, it's absolutely imperative that nobody is in the frame at the beginning of the process. I'd like to say that I haven't got a problem with a head teacher in this situation after retiring after 20 years, actually saying he does feel but it, that it would be fine or he would like his deputy to succeed him because if it's done the right way, his deputy would have to apply through the normal equal opportunity channels anyway. But I think Eileen does have a point here that actually it's a good opportunity when there's a new head teacher being appointed for perhaps the school to go in a different direction. Yes, yes it And is. the retiring head would probably like to see the same direction for the school. Mm. Um, but actually it isn't up to them. There is a case for a very experienced head teacher of 20 years being involved in the mm. process, but not obviously in the voting. The appointment of a head teacher is the most important decision that a governing body can make. The role of the outgoing head teacher in the process is that of a resource to the governing body. He will know the school well and may have a view about the direction that the school should take. However, it's very important that the outgoing head teacher is not a participant in the debate and is not involved in the actual decision making to appoint his successor. I think the other area here is that the chair of governors feels the school needs a change of vis vision. Yes, yes. So that must be a topic that's being discussed or you would hope is being discussed mm. on the governors. and what area they feel needs that change or the redirection because mm. that in that in itself mm -hmm. will affect who's appointed yes. won't it yes. yes if there's a popular deputy head there and that deputy head is going to stay even if they don't get the job of head mm. it's got to be handled carefully and sensitively right. um, which means that you know good governors need to know their school well because mm. otherwise if you're not careful the governors can just come along and impose what they feel onto the school and um, then you might get problems of morale i think you wouldn't shortlist unless they scrupulously met all of the criteria in your person specification, which is why I think your person specification is important. And I think if interviewed, they have to go through exactly the same process and exactly the same questions as everyone else. The key factor here is that the governing body understand their school well and know the direction in which they wish the school to go. This will determine the person specification and then the deputy head will be matched against that person specification. If the school requires a change of direction, it may well be that the deputy head can meet that aspiration, in which case he should be considered alongside all of the other candidates. The chair of the governors has quite a job on her hands. How would she actually look at choosing that selection panel? I think the worst nightmare, speaking as a chair of governors, would be to have a panel of totally inexperienced governors. I think actually, though, I would favour a mixture. You have to be a bit careful on governors that you don't have a sort of old guard yes. that know it all and the others feel excluded. Yeah. So I, I actually think that there should be one inexperienced mm. governor at least right. there. 
I think that this is a school which should be using not only its LEA advisor Agreed. very carefully, mm. but I think there's a strong case for appointing at least one, if not two, assessors for the post if you've been experienced. Well, governors. Because I think the other teachers in the school need to be sure and feel confident that the governors know what they're doing. I think so. Because at the end of the day, many governors aren't from an educational background. That's right. very true. The key factor that the governing body bring to this whole process is their experience and knowledge of the school and its community. Advice can always be sought and found on the technical details of the interview process and the selection procedure. The governing body itself should be a balance representing different parts of the community and different range of experience and knowledge. And it's important, if at all possible, that that balance is brought onto the selection panel. The recruitment process is unsuccessful, with the governors failing to agree on a suitable candidate for the headship, including the deputy. The chair decides, however, she'd like the deputy to take on the role of acting head, but she's concerned how he'll take this. Some governors question what the school is doing in general in terms of its staff's professional development. The school is struggling to push teaching staff into management and leadership roles and is also losing good staff to other schools. The panel begin with a discussion of how to handle the deputy head. If you didn't want this person in the first instance through the selection process, then mm, exactly. why would you want them to act up and take over the school in an acting position? I, I don't quite understand that. I, I can understand it um, because it's quite difficult to get a substitute head for the period for a very short period of time, which would take to re-advertise. But then you see, if you're doing that, and the deputy head applied in the first place and didn't get the job, they're not going to feel terribly motivated to run the school for a bit longer. No, I must say I'd probably be tempted to be looking to the LEA f for a get out of this mm. rather than asking that deputy head. Yeah. to be acting up. The panel are right to consider the sensitivities of the deputy head when asked to take on the acting head teacher role. However, it's not always the case that this will be a negative thing. Sometimes deputy heads may see this as a developmental opportunity, broadening their range of experience and making them a better candidate for future headships. What is critical is that the governing body make their expectations of the acting head very clear. Acting headship is a very different role from substantive headship and this needs to be set out right at the beginning and everybody needs to understand the length of time that the acting headship will last. However, the deputy head teacher is only one of the available options for the governing body in filling the short-term headship. The local education authority may be able to support in providing a locum head teacher or there may be opportunities provided by head teachers of other local schools who may well be able to double up for the short term. I think there's clearly a lack of professional development for the staff. Yes. And to be fair, in for all areas, you need to be moving forward. And the only way of doing that is through this development. Yeah. It begs the question with myself, what are the management team are like? Mm. A strong management team would be grooming people all the time for these posts. I would be wanting to know in this school how many advanced skills teachers mm -hmm. there were. I would be wondering if the governors had looked with the head at fast tracking, tracking yeah. excellent teachers, nominating good teachers for Teacher of the Year awards, you know, anything to kind of motivate people. I think the governors need to be speaking to mm -hmm. heads of year, uh, heads of faculties, yeah. and, and getting a proper picture themselves with an understanding that the teachers can speak to them in confidence. And it may be that the whole staffing structure needs revisiting yes. by the governors. They should have a staffing subcommittee to have a look at this and ask the right question. The role of the governing body here is to make it absolutely clear to the management and senior leadership of the school that they regard the professional development of staff as paramount and that resources should be made available to staff for their own career development. This will be in the long term best interest of the school. Another point to consider is that a good quality staff development programme may in fact lead to staff looking for opportunities in schools elsewhere, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. If your school has a reputation for turning out good quality candidates, then you will also attract good quality teachers to your school. The deputy is asked to act up on a temporary basis and agrees while the school reruns the recruitment process. The school's been very successful in its latest Ofsted, 
has good levels of attainment and is not suffering any major behaviour difficulties, despite being located in quite a deprived area. Many governors cannot understand why the job is not attracting the right applicants. But one governor suggests they're setting their standards too high. The only thing I do not agree with is that the standards are being set too high, the governor who suggests that the standards are being set too high, because I've never known mm. schools do that, and I wouldn't want standards to be lowered. I personally don't feel standards can be too high when you're actually mm -hmm. dealing with, with pupils and an education. I would rather see a superhead covering two schools for a longer period than compromise mm -hmm. on the qualities of a head. Maybe the schools should be actually comparing themselves mm. as to where they are with schools within the area. Mm. And if they're finding that they're doing really well, then I think they should be saying, no way, the standards stay. Mm. Yes. We want them this high. A point to consider here is that this may not be about standards, but about ensuring that the expectations of the governing body are realistic. For example, they may be placing a premium on experience when they will be better off looking for head teachers with the potential to grow into the post. So how can the school make itself more attractive to the right calibre of candidate? We know that some of the, the governors are inexperienced. Yes, they're inexperienced as school governors, but maybe they've got business experience from outside. Maybe possibly. somebody with a marketing background. Mm -hmm. And what is good about having a good cross-section on a governing body mm -hmm. is that you're drawing on different areas of experience. Mm -hmm. It's one of the easiest things in this day of, you know, these, this day and age of technology to actually relaunch yourself and selling the really really positive right yes. aspects and then you might be actually getting the right type of applicant. You've got to improve the image but in actual fact it's quite attractive to some potential new head teachers mm -hmm. to look at a school where there's a potential for turning it round yeah. and yeah, making a an aim for themselves yes. and getting on the career ladder so right. there is that aspect as well but that's got to somehow come over in the information that's sent out to applicants. It is of course important to paint the school in as positive a light as possible. However, it's even more important to be accurate and honest about the current state of development. This will give candidates a very clear picture of what is expected of them. Most potential candidates will want to bring something new to your school. And ironically, if you paint too perfect a picture of a school which is already very successful, they may feel they have nothing to add and be put off applying. The appointment of a head teacher is going to be the most significant decision that a governing body can make and it's important that it's seen as a long-term strategic decision rather than one taken for short-term expedience. It's important to remember that while head teachers may come and go, the governing body are the custodians of the long-term ethos of the school and should have a clear view about the direction they wish the school to take. It can be difficult to recruit a head teacher. There is a national shortage of applicants. However, it's worth putting up with the short-term instability that can be caused by rerunning the selection process if you get the right candidate in the end. And finally, the governing body will receive considerable outside advice and support from the local education authority during the selection process. But it is important to remember that it's the knowledge and experience of the school and the community that the governing body bring to the process which will be the final determining factor in ensuring that they appoint a successful head teacher to their school.